G'day mates. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the ridiculous new rule that Epic just announced that could massively change Grand Royale, which is coming up this week. And I wanna talk about all the new teams that just formed, Aqua's new team, Mongrel's new team, and some insane performances in the Trio Cash Cup. I already talked about this in a video. We were asking what was gonna to happen to teams that qualified in a different region for the FNCS Grand Real, but wanna play in a new region. Cause there's a lot of teams that have, and players who have moved around the world, they've switched regions. It's not really fair to expect them to fly back to their old region. But if you qualified, let's say in OCE for FNCS Grand Finals, then you wanna head over to EU and play in their Grand Finals. Is that really fair? You're going from a region with the lowest prize pool to now a region with the highest prize pool and you didn't qualify in their tournaments. Well, we finally have our answer from Epic. We had in the closed Discord for the FNCS Grand Real players, we had an announcement saying that users will be able to queue up for any region regardless of the region they initially qualified for. Meaning if you qualified for one region but wish to play in another, all you need to do is change your region via settings and queue up for that region's load session event. Once your trio queues up for its first load session match, your trio will be locked and registered for that region, meaning you can then no longer switch regions. So please choose which region you want to be playing on wisely. So it's that simple. Epic is letting anyone switch. So this means we could see a whole bunch of pros switch regions if they wanted to. Now, this is a little bit late. It's it's only coming out, you know, a few days before Grand Royale starts. So do I think we're going to see like OCE pros boot camp over an EU to play on zero? No, that's almost definitely not going to happen. We could see some NA West or NA East teams switch. I mean, you got a few days. It's pretty easy to book a, you know, $50 flight across country or just go for a road trip and get to the other region. It's in the same country. No visa issues. Really no kind of, I imagine, issues with trying to find accommodation. So you could potentially see that. A lot of people pushing teams like Reed, Arkham, and Epic Whale to go over and play on NA East for a way bigger prize pool. Everyone's saying they should do it. That's the main team that a lot of people are talking about with this. But this is has kind of been a discussion we've talked about in previous videos and different bits and pieces I talked about in the Muzz interview. It's going to be very hard for teams to switch regions and play on different regions because they won't get a drop spot. Let's say Arkham, Epic Whale, and Rex. If they want to switch over to NA East, they want to start dropping Believer's Beach, which is their current drop spot uncontested on West, where Arkham, Epic Whale have been dropping since Trio FNCS came into the game. They're not going to get it. They're going to go up against Clix, Tahi, and Sprite, and they're going to go up against Sav, Ages, and Kanata. So it's just not going to happen. So it's not worth them swapping despite everyone talking about it. But it might be worth it for some of the other teams to swap. And a lot of people aren't too happy about this. Like I said, it's fair to say to make a final set lobby in a region like EU with a way bigger population is a lot harder than doing it in a region like OCE. And that's why the prize pool for EU is so much higher. So to let players just switch regions as easy as just clicking a setting in their settings is a little bit strange. But you also have to remember Grand Royale has a qualification process. This isn't like All Stars where you just made it straight into the finals. There are going to be weeks of qualifiers to then play in the Grand Finals. So Epic's logic being, if you're not good on that region or you don't deserve to be there, then you won't qualify and no harm, no foul. But the prize pool for this was based off the initial player size of FNCS a couple seasons ago. If all of a sudden a whole bunch of people start playing the load sessions of Grand Royale in a different region, should that mean they get more prize money? It's an interesting topic to discuss and unfortunately as kind of standard with Epic right now, it got announced really, really late. Grand Royale qualifiers are starting in like three days, but we'll see if anyone goes for it. While on the topic of Grand Royale in like three days, we had a good look at some of our new trios that has formed right before Grand Royale. This is a $5 million tournament. So a lot of new teams looking to try and get their last chance at practice or to test how their team goes before the big tournament. And some of these are very surprising. We saw Aqua, Fastroki, and Rezon. I already talked about how Aqua and Rezon were looking for one more player. I talked about how Boop and myself believe that Fastroki was a great fit for this team. Looks like they agree. And I say this is surprising because you've got to remember Aqua with Fastroki and CRR just placed top three in the most recent FNCS. And then now they've split up already. Insane, but hey, it's their choice. And they just came 19th in the Cash Cup today on EU. So looking pretty good straight out of the gate. We had CRR's new team where he's playing with ADN and Stir6. I always say that guy's name wrong. I'm sorry. They came in 30th, so decent performance from them too. We saw Taysen's new team. First look at the one of the scariest teams on EU we've seen in a very long time. Taysen, Hen, and Chaffix. The three of those, that is a disgusting combo. As long as there's no personality issues, as long as there's no clashes of 
decisions. I imagine with three players of that caliber, there might be maybe a little bit of co-IGL going on, maybe some split decision making. But if they can get past that, they came 10th in the EU Cash Cup today and 16th in the NA East Cashy. So very, very good performance from them straight out of the gate. We had the other big team that everyone's talking about, Mongrel, Joe, and Shadow. So Mongi taking over the spot of Benji Fishy's old trio. Obviously, Joe, Shadow, Benji didn't play together last season, but unfortunately not seeing great success in their first tournament, getting 1,685th. Mongrel, I swear, made an LFT tweet looking for trio for Grand Real, but maybe since deleted it because I can't seem to find it. And after, you know, just inside top 1700th place, pretty easy to see why. I'm a bit scared for this team. I felt like Joe and Shadow when they played with Benji. A lot of people saying the same thing, that they were very one-dimensional in their play style. It was go for height or nothing, and I just don't think that play style is going to cut it in Grand Real, especially with Mongrel, who is trying to work into being more of a diverse player, not just going full psycho on height like Shockwave meta. So, scary starts for them, but I hope they can pull it all together. Moving over to NA East, we had a few other new teams as well. We had Okus, Dusky, and Na Nani, who actually took out first place. Absolutely popped off today in the NA East Cash Cup. We had Ages, Sap, and Kanata come in 10th place, and that's very scary for Clicks, Tahi, and Sprite, who are going up against them at Believer's Beach in Grand Royale if both teams qualify. Speaking of, Click Sprite, and Tahi is still a team. There's a lot of questions out there. Were they going to split? Were they going to change? They have not changed. They didn't perform too well today. I actually don't even know where they ended up on the leaderboard. The vibes were not it. It seemed like Tahi was just not having a good time. I think I'm, I'm sensing some friction between Tahi and Sprite, and I really hope that doesn't affect their Grand Royale. I think given more time or a new season, I don't imagine this team would play together, but coming into finals, we'll see if they can bring it together and pop off. And then we had Dejen, Nosh, and Iomzo. Obviously, with Ages now playing with Saf and Kanata, Dejen had to find a new team. And again, not a fantastic start for this team either. Not doing as well as Ages is on his new team. Dejen came in 328, but that team is a very scary height team. They are going to go height or nothing. I imagine that's how they're going to play Grand Real. If they have a few good games, especially with that double points on day two format, they could pull it together. That is a all or nothing team if I've ever seen one. I wanted to break down the Trio Cash Cup leaderboard because there was some exciting stuff to talk about. We had Queasy and Nas and Thomas HD, the most dominant EU Trio Cash Cup team of the season so far, taking out first place, just beating Andretta, Benji, and Savage by six points. They were in the last game together where Queasy's team managed to pull off the seven Elim win. Meanwhile, Benji's team got the eight Elim fourth. That difference between fourth and first was the difference of them losing the Cash Cup to Queasy's team, but phenomenal run from both these teams. They played absolutely absolutely fantastic. Queasy's team getting three victory royales, playing absolutely insane. We had Rogue Shark, AV, and Sparebo in third. Now, this is the highest placement we have ever seen from an NA East team on EU. And I say team because this is not an official team. They formed less than 15 minutes before the Cash Cup started and somehow almost won it. They were less than 10 points behind first place. They played absolutely insane. We then had Polly's team in fourth, Vadil's team up there in fifth place really consistently. Kiko in 6th, our FNCS winners of Seti Kami Teak in 7th. We had then uh, Papa, Papada Hell's team in 8th. We had the Frenchies, Floki, Clement, and Deceptos uh, in ninth. And then, like I said, Falcon, Tayson, Hen, and Chapix in 10th. So, good to see them back up on leaderboard. It was looking really weird not seeing taste on leaderboard for a while there. Moving over NA East, I already talked about this. Okus, Nani, and Dusky getting 232 points to take out first place in the NA East Cash Cup. Remember, EU only got 209 for first place. So 232 was an insane performance. They did start off really poorly as well, getting a 1 Elim 30th and a 4 Elim 26th in their first two games, which is normally a Cash Cup write-off. Then they brought it back with their 37 Elim win and then just went crazy from there. Their average stats don't show up because those first two games really blow it out, but they played phenomenally. We had Crispy, Death, and Tetro in second, a team that I was surprised to see up there, but played really, really well. We had our French Canadian team, Pam Stu, Carey, and Fatch. We had Cease, Cold, and Elite bring it back with a 22 Elim win. Two 22 Elim wins actually in their last three games to really clutch up. We saw Yelty's team up there, Commandment Center Stretch, who have been a little bit quiet since forming in sixth place. Oz team in seventh. We then had Wanted in eighth. We had Etso in ninth. And then we had Aegis, Saf, Kanata in 10th. So really, really good cash cup today as well.